Hello and welcome back. My name is Amy D. McKnight and we are in, we are still in module one, the basics. And we are on lesson six, beginner creative techniques. This is the epically creative rigid heddle weaving course. And we are in module one, lesson six. In this lesson, you will learn how to create visual interest with add-ins, how to create texture on the fly with hand pulled loops, and how to use up your long random yarn bits by creating wacky yarn balls. All right, fun add-ins for visual interest. So we have thrums. Now for the new weavers and the uninitiated, thrums are those pieces of weaving at the beginning and the end of warps where you cut off the parts that can't be woven um, pretty much waste yarn. So the more you weave, the more of this you're going to have. The beautiful thing is, is that as rigid heddle weavers, we have far less waste than um, those who weave on bigger looms because we can get closer to the end of our warp. And um, yeah, you can, you, you can have less waste, but you are going to have some. So what can you do with it? You can use them in your weaving. So you're going to have a lot of them. So you can do what lots of us do. You can just save them all together and you can use them as add-ins. Or if you have too many of them and they're just super random, you can use them as stuffing too. We'll talk about that in a different video. Other things you can use are fluff, AKA roving. These are super fun, especially when you're doing um, decorative type pillows or wall hangings. Um, you, you, this may or may not be something that you want to use a whole lot of in something that's going to be worn or washed a lot because it may or may not wear great, but for something that's going to be decorative or um, that's not going to get a lot of wash or wear, fluff is another really great thing you can put in there. This is probably, you might have some of this around if you got caught up in the arm knitting or hand, hand crocheting phase. I think they're still doing that. Um, yeah, so you may have just some plain roving, or if you're a spinner, you may also have some roving. These are really great to add some interest to your weaving. Last but not least, we got lengths of scrap yarn. These can also be added in at various places in the weaving, and they offer their own interest in visual effects. Now, you're asking me, well, Amy, how do I use these things? I'm so glad that you asked. Let me show you. What you're going to do is it's super simple. You're going to weave a pick. You're going to put the add-in in. And you may or may not notice that. Can you see it? I'm pointing with my finger. <laughs> Let me point with the cursor. You, this is actually one of the knots from the, the knots where I joined um, it to the bottom. Do y'all remember from the last video when I was like doing the tie on? So that's actually a knotted piece that I'm putting in there. Anyway, you can use it all. It's pretty cool. I digress. You're going to place the add-in in, and then you're going to beat. And then you're going to chain sheds. Let's do it again, this time without my extra added commentary. You're going to weave a pick in the opposite direction. You're going to put the add-in in, and you're going to beat. And then you're going to chain sheds. That is it. Simple. Next up, we have hand-pulled loops. These are super easy to do on the fly. They can be done randomly or in a more patterned way. And this is how you do it. You're going to weave a pick. You're going to unwind some yarn from the shuttle. So you want to have more yarn than what you would need to send the shuttle back through the opposite direction. All right, so you see this excess yarn over here. You're going to start at the beginning of the weaving of the pick and you're going to pull loops. You're going to pull a loop and then hold it with the other hand and then pull another loop. Pull, pull and hold, pull and hold, pull and hold all the way across. I'm going to show a video with this, so don't worry if it doesn't really make sense. I, I have a video for you that's coming up after this lesson, so you can look over my shoulder and watch me do this. Now, the reason why you hold the loop is to keep it from being reduced when pulling the next loop up. Unless you want to just have some, you know, the loops not to be perfectly exact, and that's fine too. But if you, you're wondering why my loops keep disappearing as I'm pulling, you need to hold on to the one before, before you pull the next loop. You're going to work across pulling as many or as few loops as you like, and then you're going to beat. 
Now you're going to weave a pick or two before starting again. And for thicker yarns, you want to weave a couple of picks between the rows of pulled loops just to make sure that they stay. You don't want to do a bunch of pulled loops on top of each other because um, it's, it's more likely that when the piece is being used or worn, that they might get snagged and then they'll just have a really long loop <laughs> that may or may not look right. So um, just keep that in mind. Next up. This is one of my favorites. This is super fun, our random yarn wefts. So this is a great way to use up your odds and ends of yarn, your longer odds and ends of yarn. It's probably a good idea to use yarns of similar fiber content. That being said, if you wanna just throw caution to the wind and you just wanna mix and match different yarns so you can have that fun of seeing what's gonna happen when you wet felt it, my blessings to you. Yes, that is all the part of the creative, the creative process of experimenting. But you know, if you don't like super surprises, then use the same, same content of yarn as you're making your little balls. What you're going to do is you're going to use some type of knot. I'm using a square knot to tie the lengths together randomly to make yarns, or you can cut longer pieces into various sizes. Um, having an assortment of textures and colors makes the finished project super fun. It is just for um, for a design idea. You may want to try to pick up colors that are similar to each other in the different in the as you're deciding on what you're going to put together. So, for example, in this, you see I've got purples in here. And, and I've got these blue greens as well. These are totally different yarns, but they share the colors. Um, this also shares a purple, this shares a blue. So even though these are different, they're gonna to come together because there are they share colors in, 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 in common. So those are some things to keep in mind. Or you can just go totally wild and wacky and that is fun too. This is an excellent project for little tiny hands who wanna help you create. They they can make some, my, my daughter has actually made some super cool um, wacky balls as she's just pulling all the different things from different places and tying them together. Now, um, once you're finished making your ball, you can either wind it into or put, put them together. You can wind them together and just keep the balls and save for later, or you can put them on a shuttle and weave, some, weave up a really cool piece of cloth. And that is what you get when you have made some seriously wacky yarn balls. All right, so in this lesson, you learn how to create visual interest with add-ins, how to create texture on the fly with hand-pulled loops, how to use up your long random yarn bits by creating wacky yarn balls. So take action now. I want you to weave along with me as I demonstrate how to use add-ins, how to do hand pulled loops and how to create and weave with random yarn balls. In the next lesson, you're going to learn how to simply secure the end of your weaving while on the loom and three easy methods for securing your fringe and how to wet finish your woven cloth. So yes, more fun things to learn to come. Now, if you haven't already, I get it, I get it. Maybe you just want to watch through the entire series of videos to get an overview before you got started, just to see where we're going. I gotcha, understand. But if you haven't already, go ahead and download and print out the Basics of Weaving Game Board. <clears throat> and the link is in the description below this video. And, um, and yeah, keep it with you so you can check off and make progress as you're going through these lessons. And even better, join the join my weaving community. That way, as you're doing these things, you can share and interact with others in a community setting around this information. This is not a Facebook group. This is important. This is not a Facebook group. This is a private off Facebook network that has the cool features like Facebook without the other baggage. And so if you want to interact um, in a creative weaving community with supportive, fun people, then I invite you to join my weaving community, www.myweavingcommunity.com forward slash join. There's more information there at that site. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up. 
for the video, leave me a comment. Let me know if you learned something new, something that you're going to try. Subscribe to the channel. You know, that's the way that you'll be able to know when I put out more videos. But more than that, ring that notification bell because um, I've got some really amazing stuff coming out and you want to make sure that you know when I put out these videos and share this video, share these this series, um, share this channel because we want to grow the rigid heddle weaving, the creative rigid heddle weaving um, world. I think that in growing this part and giving people permission to really enjoy their looms, to really um, have fun and take ownership, creative ownership of what they do and create, um, the rigid heddle weaving world is going to grow. And so um, I'm trying to do my part by putting these videos out here to the public. If you can help me in this mission of helping more people become creative weavers by sharing the video, that would mean a whole lot to me. So thank you in advance for sharing the video and thank you for doing all the other things as well. All right, y'all, that's it for this video. I will see you in the Over My Shoulder Girl Weavings and I will see you in the next lesson.